Hello and welcome to this edition of Foreign Press Correspondents Talk. I'm Isabel Soares, an associate reporter for the Association of Foreign Press Correspondents USA. And joining me today is board member of AFC, Alex Rolfoglu, and Azur Bajani, American journalist, researcher, press freedom advocate who focuses on Eurasia. He has worked extensively in the South Caucasus and Black Sea regions for several broadcast outlets, including BBC, RFE, RL, VOA, and others. Uh, since 2008, Ralph Glu has lived in the US where he worked as a journalist for several media outlets as well. Thank you for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Zabon. It's great to see you, finally. Yeah, finally, we've been talking about um, doing this interview. I'm so excited to speak with you. But before we go into details about your career right now, I want to head back to those early days. Tell me, when did you decide to become a journalist? Well, it depends on how far you can spin the time clock, Isabella. <laughs> you know, I was, although I'm not that young, uh, I was born in Soviet Azerbaijan. So back then, um, you know, uh, the reality, we used to live in a different world. Uh, and I remember getting first uh, uh, offer to work for a local paper. It goes back to my seventh grade. And I was born to a family you know, where you know, journalism was not a family business, albeit my dad was uh, you know, a dissident voice uh, in the Soviet Union, and uh, which was not enticing for my mom. <laughs> so that's why she didn't want me to become a journalist. She wanted me to become rather a doctor or something much more safer, uh, you know, within, given the circumstances. Um, I did accept that offer, and, uh, and, but unfortunately, you know, during the Soviet times, you know, the Soviet Union got collapsed, you know, reality changed in the region, and, uh, you know, I went back and forth through my, uh, you know, decision uh, whether or not I want to become a journalist was still questionable for me. Um, and my late dad, uh, who just passed away recently, um, I remember I had a very candid conversation with him one day. And he told me, look, uh, if you speak up and become a journalist, so you're gonna have a tough life. So if you don't speak up, uh, you're gonna have a tough life. So speak up. So I decided to <laughs> follow that uh, suggestion from my dad. And um, so I just went through my career. Uh, as soon as I you know, started understanding uh, you know, the you know, gravities of the region, uh, there was one vocabulary that I heard over and over, which was censorship. Although the Soviet Union got collapsed, uh, I experienced firsthand what that meant actually to work under censor you know, censorship until 1998, which was uh, you know, the case in Azerbaijan. Um, I decided to think outside of the box. So I went to Turkey at that time uh, to study a little bit you know, about Western journalism standards. And uh, I started working for Turkish and international media you know, back in Turkey. And then I returned back to Azerbaijan, and uh, so it was different reality in the country. Uh, we had you know, international media outlets you know, operating in the country until about, about late 1990s, early 2000s. Um, I was not necessarily thinking about actually becoming a foreign reporter because my career was I was like old traditional you know uh, reporter, uh, relying on you know, uh, you know uh, boundaries that you know uh, press media uh, was able to offer at that time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I went to different countries, you know, early 2000s uh, when the things changed, like in Georgia, in Ukraine, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, before my eyes, you know, I was really shocked, uh, you know, being part of the process when the countries were going through historic, you know, uh, changes. Like Georgia had a regime change, Ukraine, and when the Maidan revolution happened, I was standing right at the center of the uh, square and thinking about you know, the country, what, it just happened, you know. Uh, it was very interesting uh, to understand, um, you know, that uh, you know, the wave of this new wave of democracy had so much to offer to a wider region. And I uh, returned back to Azerbaijan and started thinking about, you know, um, maybe like living and working in different countries. But the problem with Azerbaijani you know, media back in early 2000s was that, uh, you know, the situation was deteriorating at that time. Media didn't have a chance to you know, uh, let's operate outside of Baku, capital city, let alone, you know, having some bureau, you know, in Washington, D.C. or some other capitals. Uh, at that time, in 2008, I got an offer to work for Voice of America, which is the U.S. Uh, government-backed and uh, agency. And I decided to, uh, you know, accept the offer, and I moved to the D.C. 
area and uh, start working for VOA. Uh, but um, uh, it was a moment when Azerbaijan, again, was going through uh, difficult times in terms of you know, uh, the state of press freedom in the country. Um, as soon as I moved here, uh, you know, international broadcasting services uh, lost the ability to be in local you know, broadcasting waves. So uh, that's why I want to speak up and be you know, voice to my colleagues the people I left back at home. Something I couldn't you know, have done uh, within you know, the VOA, the framework of you know, this uh, government agency. So I decided to uh, leave VOA and um, be, become a press freedom advocate and a journalist uh, representing independent voices uh, from Azerbaijan. This is a long story short, but uh, there's so many details, obviously, uh, that uh, I'm happy to share with you. Yeah, for sure. I think it's incredible that you gave us kind of like an overview of your career so far. And uh, like you said, uh, you, you had experience covering various different countries in the early 2000s before moving to the U.S., um, including your home country. So I wanted to ask you, what is the main difference between, you know, doing coverage in your like main country? You you live were born in Baku. Um, could you tell us, like, how is that different from like covering events in the U.S.? Oh, what an amazing question! Thank you so much for asking that. Because uh, you know, I have thought about that over and over uh, in the past. You know, um, unlike other countries, when you move to a democracy, once you step into, once you find your way to Washington D.C. In my case, you, unbeknownst to you, you become, uh, you know, an important pillar, important part of checks and balances that people in this country hold on to, you know, uh, hold their own uh, officials accountable. Uh, and that's why you don't realize in me that you're actually an actor on the stage. You know, it, it, this is not the case in other countries. Like, you know, in I lived in different capitals, European capitals and, you know, Eastern European cities. Um, you know, once you, you know, it, it, you are a foreign reporter, but you're foreigner first, reporter second. Uh, by the time people on the street realize that you're a reporter, you have to prove yourself. It really uh, takes a lot of time for you to really understand the gravities, you know, the realities of the, you know, of the countries that you are in. Uh, but in Washington, this is really different. Um, you know, there are five uh, C's that I would like to highlight here first, uh, you know, just off the bat. One is the contact. Before moving to the U.S., I did cover U.S., Azerbaijani, U.S., Russian, U.S., Turkish relationship and other countries. I did know some actors, you know, on the stage. I did have contacts. Second C in this case will be communication. So I started communicating with them. I started reaching out to them, hey, I am here, I'm, I work for VOA or like some other agencies, I cover Azerbaijan, let's just get united, have some beer, coffee, you know, brunch. Uh, we just started like, you know, uh, basically establishing, which is number three in this case, which is very important, that consistency. You know, they start knowing you that, oh, there's a foreign reporter in this town covering Azerbaijan, consistently caring about, you know, press freedom, you know, uh, let's say Azerbaijan related topics, or Russia, Turkey, or Georgia. Uh, number four C in this case will become community, uh, which is again, uh, was not the case like when I lived in uh, Georgia or covered, uh, you know, uh, let's say Ukrainian uh, uh, political you know, uh, agenda at that time. Um, you don't necessarily become part of the community immediately, but America is different. Uh, you know, community starts, you know, so much, you know, it starts embracing you and offering you so much because you, the longer you live here, you become uh, part of the you know uh, realities of Washington, and then it's it's up to you to translate that com community, which is you know, take us to number five, is the collaboration. You have to collaborate. Um, those five C's allowed me to become full time reporter in this town. Um, another thing about this town is that Washington is really small. Uh, you know, you really uh, once you fuse yourself into like this community reality, you understand that. Your next door neighbor or someone in your you know building, your neighborhood, might uh, might become tomorrow uh, assistant secretary of state. You know, uh, this small town, uh, people you know administrations come and go, but people stay in town. They move to the K Street if they leave the administration and become you know think tankers. You know, and then you start communicating with them, and they know you. You know them. The longer you live there, there's a good chance that they return back to the government. You know, as soon as you know Democrats take over or Republicans take over. So I've lived like uh, I think it's the fourth administration uh, that uh, since I have, you know moved to Washington D.C. that uh, is in the White House, and you know when Bush administration left, I just made it there in August, you know two months before the election, and uh, I got to know Bush administration officials, and then when Obama administration took over, those officials became think tankers, my neighbors, you know people that I was hanging out with, you know walking my 
puppy, we say puppies, you know. Uh, that is like, again, and then when they turn back to the uh, Trump administration, you know, that was uh, something that I established you know, great connections with them. Same thing about the Biden administration, you know, Obama administration, uh, people you know, left the White House or uh, the State Department, and then now they're back, uh, you, know, uh, on, you know, they are, you know, human beings, essentially, right? I mean, you know, we tend to think about, like, outside of the you know, state, I mean, before moving here, we tend to think about American uh, officials as, you know, superhumans, subhumans, definitely not humans. But when you come here and then you live with them and you are part of the community, uh, then, you know, those connections that you establish and then start collaborating with them, uh, that, that does affect your, uh, you know, job as a family member. This is the major thing that I would, uh, I would say that makes a clear distinction between, you know, being a foreign reporter in Washington and in other uh, countries I live in. Yeah, for sure. I think that's incredible how you talked about being able to connect with these people outside even, you know, like the reporting sector. You're, you're talking to them because they're like your neighbors. They're living, you know, across the street and stuff like that. So it makes a huge difference, I think. Um, now, I want to talk about something that's very sp important for you, which is being an advocate, uh, being an advocate for press freedom. Uh, could you share with me a little bit of why um, you're so vocal about this issue? And what are some of the implications for journalists who are in countries where press freedom um, and press coverage is restricted? Yeah, uh, I, I thank you for this question. It's a very important question for me. It's personal. Um, uh, also comes uh, back to, um, you know, uh, when I turn back, I think about that, that shifty moment you know, when I became, you know, I was a journalist, you know, writing about uh, U.S. as a general relationship or like, you know, diplomacy or human rights. How did shift the moment uh, of shifting from uh, journalism to activism? I, when I turned back from Newsom to Classroom last time, uh, it was my second uh, grad school. People were talking about some terminology, which activism, quote unquote. Um, so I wasn't really um, understand. But at that time, it took a while for me to process how I can journalists become, you know, uh, be an activist, right? Uh, but then life uh, did add up. Like my publication, I back then uh, used to work for, a shut down in Azerbaijan, um, and I found myself in a position that if I don't speak up, I stand up for them, uh, then who else will do that, right? Uh, and uh, at the same time, it didn't really um, stay in Azerbaijan or in you know, other countries I do care about. Uh, they, are, they start exporting you know, this press freedom, um, you know, uh, let's say, crackdown uh, outside their borders. So that's why I decided on, I understood at that moment that if we journalists don't stand up um, for each other, so no one will, you know, uh, that's number one. Number two, um, you know, do not take press freedom for granted. Uh, you know. Uh, particularly when you live in a country where press freedom, like I said before, is part of the checks and balances uh, you know, uh, that people you know, rely on in this country to control their government. Um, and when you think about uh, you know, how uh, you know, democratorships, you know, dictatorships and democrat democracies, uh, uni some unification of those false uh, notions start to take advantage of a you know, uh, crackdown that is going on in other parts of the world and try to apply it in their own countries, and you feel that, you know, it is your mission as a journalist. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you probably have heard Idi Amin, late uh, Ugandan dictator, uh, was reported once said that, you know, he could guarantee freedom of speech in his country, but he could not guarantee freedom after speech, right? That was a word we used to live in back then. But unfortunately, today, uh, as, you know, the press freedom uh, enemies start evolving and copy pasting from each other, uh, thanks to that reality, we live in a different uh, you know, environment where uh, journalists uh, are being deprived of freedom even before speech. Unfortunately, that's a, uh, that is a new trend. You know, they are being labeled as you know, foreign agents just because they are you know, reporters. Uh, so this keeps evolving. And if you add up technology and other boundaries, uh, new boundaries, you feel like, oh my God, I mean, if, you're, if I don't speak up right now, no one else will, that's number one. Number two, uh, they keep cooperating, and they keep uh, collaborating, I mean, with enemies. Um, and they go after individuals in, like, in other countries. They team up against individual voices. So that does, uh, you know, put uh, additional responsibility on us uh, as 
uh, Christian community. You know, our community, let's acknowledge that, our community suffers uh, you know, from, uh, from unity, not having it. If we don't have it, unfortunately, because that's uh, that by definition, journalists, you know, tend to you know, go through different ways. You know, they, I did mention five Cs, like you have to establish those Cs together. By the time you reach out to that level that you become personality, like a journalistic name in, the, in one country, you feel like, you know, uh, press freedom is, you know, not your concern. You know, something's happening in Azerbaijan, in Russia, in Turkey. It's about, you know, uh, Azerbaijan, Russia, and Turkey, right? But uh, it does bounce back. Uh, that's why we need to start talking about unity. We need to team up again. Maybe uh, uh, this club is another uh, umbrella that uh, I'm, I'm happy to highlight, um, this, which, is, uh, which takes me back to number 60, the club. Come join us and be part of the community uh, and uh, be, uh, you know, part of, uh, be able to speak up for voiceless. Otherwise, your journalism, uh, it's going to bounce back and it's going to uh, be uh, you know, a major problem for even democracy. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think it's very important for us to highlight that because it is a privilege, you know, and we have to, um, you know, acknowledge that and make sure that everyone is helping one another in a situation like this, because it is important for any person who is working with the press to um, have the freedom of sharing what is happening. And uh, lastly, before you go and we finish this interview, I just wanted to ask you if, for foreign correspondents who are probably looking to move to the U.S. or people who want to become foreign correspondents someday, what would be your word of advice for them? And maybe how does AFC help people who are trying to go into this path? Wonderful question, and thank you for that. Um, the way I, and I, I, I know that some of our board members also will uh, perhaps join me with that observation. Uh, the way we envision our role as foreign correspondents in this town is like a two-way role, right? Uh, we do contribute into American you know, democracy, you know, uh, particularly uh, being in Washington, uh, being a foreign correspondent in, in a room, um, as I, like I mentioned, like we become part of check and balance. Uh, politicians, when they would be happy to sell our uh, different stories to different audiences. Uh, when they see us in the room, um, they start thinking you know, uh, twice. Because uh, w by being in a room, we try to, uh, we play that, uh, that let's say, uh, uh, how to put that, like second uh, uh, thinking role for, for the politicians. They feel like, you know, they can't, uh, you know, uh, they can't, uh, let's say, get away with, uh, fake news or alternative facts, whatever uh, that we have heard from the stage uh, previously. Um, number two is that, well, you do represent your own community. Uh, in my case, I do write for Azerbaijan audience or Russian Georgian or Turkish audiences, right? And um, by being here, like as I said, in a room, I also offer different perspectives. You know, uh, you become a contact uh, for people in this town. They reach out to you, they try to, you know, uh, you know uh, reach out to your audience through you, and uh, it's like two ways wrong. You do contribute a lot, also they do uh, give back to you to basically become a messenger between the world that you live in and the community you represent. You know, we, uh, we are, uh, very mildly, you know, uh, we have, it's like a hot place, like a revolving door. Like, you know, uh, you get in and try to, you know, uh, basically um, convince the politicians here that you know, uh, you know uh, what matters to community does matter because you know it is something important you know, for you. But at the same time, politicians you know, they don't wake up every morning to, you know thinking about uh, you know making Azerbaijan, Russia, Turkey you know major subject because it's a small town with bigger agenda, right? That's why it's up to you. But you have to play, you have to be able to play both roles. Number two, you know the club. You know, um, at some point, I remember a couple of years ago, I was sitting. Uh, in the East Room at the White House covering a uh, U.S. Uh, Turkish president's press event. And, and, and unbeknownst to me, the next person sitting right next to me, uh, 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 his name is Rahim Rashidi, uh, later on became uh, another board member in the club. You know, uh, the club proved to be a wonderful, wonderful umbrella for reporters come from different countries, you know, different backgrounds, and, and having 
single agenda of being you know, at the center of the news you know, making process. Uh, uh, Mr. Kurt, uh, he is known as Mr. Kurt, I uh, did, and I and many others, we speak different languages and we have different you know, uh, stories to chase every day. But at the end of the day, we are here for two reasons. One, to help the world understand our countries and also to help our countries understand Washington DC, understand the US, understand the world. So that role is very important for me. And I see, it, as I see the club, uh, 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 major umbrella club, umbrella group, uh, if not the first, but uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, leading groups uh, to, to unite the journalists, you know, uh, you know, coming from different corners of the world and, and help them help each other. Definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Alex, for your time. It was incredible to speak with you, know a little bit about your background and what you have been doing in regards to press freedom and all the coverage that you have to do. Thank you so much. That is mine. I'm a huge fan of the work, tremendous work that you have put together. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you.